Welcome to Mindset, where we journey through the realms of mind and body to unlock the full potential of human wellness. Join your host, Alex Muir, as we explore transformative health hacks, debunk myths, and empower you with knowledge straight from the experts. Dive into each episode ready to flex your mind, body, and soul. Because your ultimate well-being journey starts right here. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. And today's episode 109 is going to be about Beyond Nootropics, Peter Dubensky's holistic approach to peak performance and mental clarity. Now, me and Peter had an episode, gosh, it would have been like a year and a half ago now. Yeah. And Peter's a buddy of mine, and we go way back. What is it, like 18, 19 years as friends since grade five? Yeah, I think grade five, our, yeah. Yeah, we're in our 30s <laughs> now, and... uh want to preface this episode just like the last episode that we had again this is our part two and just mentioning we're not doctors we don't claim to be doctors on the internet we're just you know verbalizing our experience of how we navigate through life supplements we take dietary approaches we we take um doesn't mean they're the be all and end all but it's just like modalities that work for us and that goes with our psychology um and stuff like that so don't take anything verbatim we're not doctors we don't claim to be these are just uh, approaches, lifestyle hacks that we choose to use that work for us. So without further ado, welcome to the show. <laughs> yeah. Glad, glad to be back. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time and you know, even things that like doesn't work, you know, it's, um, it's a lot of it's trial and error. And then we've been on this journey for a long time of, um, trying to enhance our mind or bodies. Um, so, you know, just trying to, um, help your audience, uh, come to a little bit of a better understanding of some of these uh, compounds that we're using and and feel comfortable even, you know, talking to their doctors and, and trying them out and seeing if it works for them. You know, that's what it's all about. We want to share the knowledge and and we want everyone to be healthy, um, you know, fit, smart um, and, you know, protecting protecting your brain and, and really enhancing yourself. So no, that's no, the goal, that's right? Absolutely. And like, that's what it's all about, right? And that's what the mindset brand's all about is like optimizing brain and body and then, you know, mind, body, soul. So, and then with doing that, right, you're, we're going to, we're going to run into some, some challenges. We're going to, but we're also going to find some windfalls in there where we're like, oh, this is really working. Let's double down on this. And then if it's not working, okay, how can we, how can we improve it or how can we adapt? Um, and speaking of adapting and changing and kind of pivoting, like, you've been an athlete for your entire career and then you know you've transitioned into um studying to become a nurse why don't you tell a little bit about the audience about like how kind of that experience has been for you kind of maybe having a relearn how to study like what study methods work for you um how you've had to kind of hone in your focus more and then like what do you do to kind of stay dialed in and if you need to stay up later or wake up earlier what kind of like works for you yeah well well you know it's um you know, I, I've really tried to push uh, my professional lacrosse career for as long as I could. Um, fortunately, uh, father age sort of catches up with you and, you know, you, you got to realize and you got to make a change at some point. You know, I had some injuries and, um, you know, the job I was doing before, I just wasn't getting a fulfillment from it. And and when you're in that sort of that lull and you're just sort of there making the paycheck, um, you know, that desire, that drive, um, you know, we strive for that. And and not having that and, and realizing that my lacrosse is something that I wasn't able to do anymore. Um, I just thought that, yeah, the nursing would be something that I've uh, always been fascinated with medicine, healthcare, helping people. So I thought it would just be a natural transition. Um, yeah, it was definitely a little bit of a, a almost a culture shock going back uh, to school. You know, it, it was been over 10 years since, uh, since I graduated high school. So um, you know, just getting back into that mindset and, and really like, you know, a lot of the studying, um, yeah. And just, and just setting that timetable, um, just realizing, you know, you have to dedicate, you know, two, three hours a night of studying just to, you know, make sure you're getting all your pre-readings in and, and, um, doing the best that you can do in a lot of the classes. Cause, um, especially taking like a first, like the biology and English, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a change. So, um, you know, I powered through it and, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun though. A lot, lot of, uh, 
a little bit of a sleep deprivation, but, uh, you know, it, it's going to be all worth it. Uh, and, and I know as a nurse, uh, I'm going to be working long hours. So, so I got to get used to it. Yep. And you absolutely kicked ass your first year. So props to you, bro. Like it's not easy, uh, doing that full transition and then having to get your prereqs that you need and, you know, upgrades courses and stuff. So it takes time. It takes diligence. And, um, you know, I've always admired you for that. Like, like when you want to flip a switch, you can do it if you put your mind to it. And like, and that's what it takes, especially becoming a nurse, right. Or, or any career change, you have to, um, be super dialed in and, and, you know, and be like, Hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I got to do. No matter how painful it gets sometimes, I'm going to, I'm going to do it at whatever it takes. Yeah. And that was the big thing. It was like, um, you know, with lacrosse, like it, it is a mental game, but you know, as a goalie, but it's still that physical aspect. So it's like, you know, I was, I was working so hard, keeping my body and in, in tip physical condition and, and then being able to transition that into working on my mind and make, making sure cognitively that I could, you know, make that switch to, you know, now I got to focus on my brain. Now I got to focus on my, my memory, my short-term, long-term memory and, and, you know, being able to, to do a lot more like public speaking, things like that, presentations. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, it's just, once you make that switch, you just got to be fully committed. And, and I know you're the same way that, uh, when you set your mind to something, you're all in. And, and, and I think that's required, especially if you want to get a degree and, and you want to uh, thrive in, in whatever career or whatever passion hobby that, that you really want to dive into. Yeah. And like, that's the key word all in, right? Like anything that you want to do, you just got to be okay with going all in. And even if it's uncertain and, um, you know, that's what one thing COVID's taught us is like, the world is really uncertain. The world, the world will continue. The world will continue to the spin and revolve and all that. But at the same time, like the world doesn't stop. So whether we decide we don't want to do something or whether we decide we do want to do something, it's nothing's going to change unless we want to change or we decide to change. So that's a, that's a prime example, right? Um, especially with like mm -hmm. education, because so many people will go to school and they might they Oh, I want to do business or I want to do science, but then they get out and then they do something completely different. So, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with transitioning to something else. Um, so like, and I feel like we're kind of in a similar circumstance there where like, like I'm in fun. I've been in financial services for yeah, over five and a half years now. And yeah, going on seven, I guess. And at the time when I started, I'm like, oh my God, like I'm all in. This is what I want to do. I've dreamed about this since I was a young kid. But now it's like, like, cause I'm like, I want to help people too. Right. And yes, you can help people in financial services, but it's different. It's like, there's, there's that target. You always have to hit a target while helping someone. You always have to get the sale while helping someone. It's to me, it kind of, been meddling with my morals and like yeah it's it's part of the role it's part of the profession but i feel like i can i can help people in a very different way i want to help people in a different way and i don't think that fit for me is in financial services i definitely feel like it's in the health space like yourself like it's a different it's a different thing right when we're um uh helping people like like improve their behavior, improve their habits, their psychology, their biology, right? Or sorry, physiology. And that's mm -hmm. an area where I'm like, okay, how can I use my current skills and how can I transition to that? And that's why I'm like, well, why don't I think about personal training? Because everyone's like, you know, I think about what people have like said that I should do, what I like to do. And then, and then where's the gap? Like, where's that gap of where I, where I can still monetize it and build a living off of it? And a lot of people are like, Alex, like you, you should, you should definitely like you, you could, you could coach people. You, you're a good uh, mentor to people, right? You, you inspire and motivate people and like, and personal trainers do that. And they, and then nowadays they're actually getting paid pretty well, right? Like, yeah, you don't make a ton of money out, right out of the gate, but there's opportunity there and I can build it up. Like you said, I can do part time and then eventually down the road, potentially work for a gym. And then, so, you know, with all that said, like, first, first order of business is I got to, like, I have my CPR and first aid, but I got to get, I got to re recertify. And then the next thing mm -hmm. is to start that fitness theory course. So once I get that, I know I'm all in. So. Yeah. And that's, and that's a big thing. Like if you have something that you're passionate about, um, you know, it's, it's easy to put that time into it and, and then want to do it because you know, it's, it's not, 
like a, a a chore at the end of the day, you know, you're, you're doing something that you want to do and, and it makes it fun and, and easy to do. Um, obviously not easy, you know, it's still, you know, you got to put in the hours, but yeah. you know, you want to, and, and, yeah. and that could be a big difference. And, and for even like going to school, um, you know, both of us, uh, being 30 now, we're, we're, uh, we're at that age where we have that maturity where we can offer that guidance and that help to, to the younger, like even some of my peers, the younger peers, um, you know, offering, you know, assistance, uh, you know, in studying tips or, you know, some of the things I do in my morning, uh, evening care, like the routine, just, just being able to get out of that cycle because a lot of them, they, they don't have those skills and they haven't, um, you know, learn those, those, to break some of those bad habits, um, which can be detrimental for, you know, if you're not getting enough sleep or anything like that. So no, and I, and I think you'd excel them. And I know, uh, how many years that you've been busting your ass and, and, uh, you know, you know, you know, your shit when it comes to, to <laughs> fitness, health and, and, um, I think it's a de detriment to the world if, uh, if you're not able to give that to others. Yeah. So, like so, like that's a one thing, right? Like if you feel like you have a gift, um, you got to share that gift. You gotta, you gotta share that knowledge. Right. But now I just want to hone in on that knowledge and add and add and refine that knowledge and then share it. Um, cause I mm -hmm. feel like it'd be super beneficial. Right. And I know a lot of people will gain a lot of value, um, from that. So I'm excited. It's going to be a, it's going to be the dawn of a new era and, uh, you know, for, for both of us. And there's going to be a lot, there's going to be a lot of growth. There's going to be a lot of challenges, but like you said, when you're passionate, when you have enough passion for it, that will help us stick with it long term. Cause my mm -hmm. biggest thing nowadays, like, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, bro, but you're in the same boat too. Like everything that we do now, we're in our thirties. We're really thinking long term. We have to stick with it for the long haul. Cause if we don't stick with it for the long haul, that's more detrimental. And that's something that I realized coming to my thirties, like, yeah, I don't want to do the trend. You know, I don't want to transition again, but I have to, because it's going to create long term long-term longevity and long-term growth for me because I'm the most passionate about that area of, uh, of, of, of interest that can mm -hmm. still build a, an amazing life. Right. And if we want to feel fulfilled, if we want to, if we want to, uh, you know, last long-term in something, we got to be super passionate about it. So. Mm -hmm. And, and for, well, fortunately for us, like our, our responsibilities sort of allow us to make these transitions. Um, you know, uh, we both, uh, don't have the joy of having young families yet, but I, but I, but I think that's in your future and that's certainly in my future. I, I, I want to have kids and, um, you know, while, while I'm still, um, while I still don't have any kids, then uh, I can make this transition and not, you know, feel guilty and not put a, my family in uh, distress over something that I want to do. And I think that that makes it a lot harder when you have those responsibilities that are that are higher on that list um, to make a change like this, but but fortunately we we sort of can, and so you know I think um, you know so, the sooner the better. Once you need to find that passion, you need to know that you could do something for the next thirty years, thirty five years. So yeah, absolutely. It's like it's all about the the longevity there, and um, like we we like we having that mentality of okay like the next thing i decide got to stick with it got to stick with it because i know i know 100% like kids are coming in the next few years and and you know i'm i'm prepared for it right? i'm like kind of like mm -hmm. i'm psychologically preparing for it and but i also want to be physiologically right cuz like to be a dad i'm going to need tons of energy right and i already have lots of energy but i need to need to have more cuz i know i'm going to be there's going to be phases where I'm more sleep deprived and I'm going to be like, you know, a little bit more grouchy. And <laughs> yeah. So knowing that it's like, you know, I want to prepare my mind and body for that, for the best way I can, but there's only so much you can pre prepare and uh, you just got to roll with the punches as well. So, well, yeah, let's, let's talk about, you're talking about your morning and evening routine. How is that different now than it did before? Now you always been a pretty good at, at being an early riser. Do you, are you getting up like around six, six thirty in the morning or seven or give yourself a couple hours or an hour to study in the morning and then the rest at night or how you, how's your protocol working for you? Yeah, I've been sleeping a little bit more since I've been off school. Um, I don't have a, like a full-time job currently, so I get the, the benefit of, of, uh, catching a few hours more sleep. So, but I'm usually around like seven thirty eight ish. 
um, very similar routine, but, um, but yeah, just trying to make sure I get up, get like at least like, uh, a full thing of water, 750 uh, mLs of water, and and then sort of get that to start my day. Tr- try to like try to stay off the phone for you know the start, like but just like get out of bed. I think that's the biggest thing. It's just just not laying in bed because then you're just procrastinating and then you get worse. And and I went through phases of doing that, like um, and you, you and you don't even realize it sometimes. Like you get in these like sort of these little like depressant states. Um, and you think it's, it's, uh, you're just trying to get those little dopamine hits from like content or scrolling through uh, videos online, and and it could be like it could really it could really mess you up, I think, and it can and it can and that could change your brain for the worse, I believe. So so just eliminating that, just getting up in the morning, making sure um, I could get outside, get some sunshine, and then you know start the day off. I think that's really important. So you take the Andrew Huberman approach, like, you know, like uh, jump out of bed and then, you know, g- try and try and beeline it for the sunlight. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I try to mimic a lot of what he says. Um, I think he, he's in, incredibly smart and uh, he's got he's got a lot of uh, good things to say and, and he's got a lot of knowledge. So, um, but yeah, I, I think that's that's definitely important. Yeah. And then like uh, for focus, for studying, um or actually, let, let's let's go to that after. But uh, for for like your, do you eat pretty much the same thing on a daily basis for breakfast, lunch, or do you like to kind of vary the lunch and dinner and then eat kind of the same thing every day for breakfast? Um, I've been actually changing up a little bit. I'm in um, going through Instagram and finding like little meal prep stuff. So, um, but I always try to keep it like very simplistic. Like I always sort of have eggs in the morning. Uh, whether that's with toast or potatoes, something like that. And then I like to have like a chicken meal. And then I usually like to have like a red meat meal. So whether that's like extra lean ground beef or bison or to have like a steak, um, just to get just sort of a mix in. I, I, I love to have fish when I could get, I don't, I'm not very good at cooking fish. So that, that obviously uh, limits my, my abilities to eat it more, but uh, <laughs> my dad, my dad's always smoking salmon, and nice. and I try to and I try to get as much uh, as much as it, as I can. Do you got an but, air yeah, fryer? Yeah, I think it. Yes, I do, and I I use it religiously. It's, look uh, look up a recipe favorite. for sockeye salmon uh, or coho in the air fryer. It's like I I've been doing that lately, man. And it's like chef's kiss. It's like mm, the okay. most tasty. Just olive oil. Like the no salt seasoning from Costco that we always used to get, mm-hmm. uh, salt and pepper. That's it, and mm. it's just unreal. And then I like to I prefer the coho, just because again sockeye salmon's a little more leaner, right? So it'll dry out a little bit easier. But man, those putting those fillets in the air fryer is just like tasty. Yeah, and and they're the natural omegas, right? And the omega threes, omega sixes, like, um, you know, those are so crucial, so crucial for for just like feeling better and, and for your mind, I think it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, uh, it's like one of those, one of those meats, those proteins that are just so high on the list for, for like the nutritional value that they provide. And then like, what do you, uh, has there been any changes like, uh, cause, cause again, you're still playing sports, right? You've been in the NLL national lacrosse league. Um, you're, you're playing for the Timberman right now and goalie as well. Um, has has the has like uh, have you had to like uh, increase the calories at all, or is the calories pretty much the same? Or because I know you're doing a lot more cardio again, so any changes there, or or like uh, how how much of a budget do you allocate for your grocery bill? <laughs> uh, it, it, I'd say it, it's pretty similar. Um, I don't make a lot of changes. I would say more. It's like um, I try to eat less like at home because I'm on the road more. And so I'm eating out a little bit more. So I know that I need to compensate for that because anything you're getting when you're eating out, like, you know, when we're on a ferry ride, if we're getting a burger from, you know, their white spot cafeteria, it's going to be super high. So, you know, just, just making sure I'm smart with that. Um, but also like, you know, while I'm still playing, like it, you need those calories for, for that extra energy, a lot more carbs, but, but it's more like um, I just focus on like trying to maintain throughout the week my regular diet but then like when it comes to game days or the night prior i try to get in a little extra carbs because i know then i can use those that storage um for energy during the game which is when you know when you're 
uh, expulsion of uh, you know everything so yeah just trying to like it's more like a timing thing i think more than anything yeah yeah no for sure and i'm really trying to work on that lately too because some days like with work it's crazy right like you're having a day and it's like you know sometimes me and ashley don't eat till eight o'clock at night right and then we don't finish eating till nine because i'm such a slow mm -hmm. ass eater <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it's like because the biggest thing because i'm having a podcast guest on for uh, Sunday, August 4th. And he's a physician. He's from Norway. And, um, so that sneak peek on that, um, coming up, but, uh, yeah, he talks about, yeah, trying to do like kind of a short fast, like kind of how we already were doing, right? Like 12 hours, right? You're just, you're only eating between the hours of like 12 and eight or 11 AM and 7 PM. Right. I'm on no more eating after that. So, um, yeah. So I feel like, like I kind of did that today because, you know, you just get busy, right? Sometimes I like to dive right into my creative work when I'm off work. And then, and then I had the dentist appointment today. So I didn't have, I didn't eat anything until like one o'clock today. It's just the way the day worked out. But nowadays I'm just noticing that when I was doing a shitload of intermittent fasting, I was getting more gut unrest. It was causing too much like digestive upset for me. And normal, like, and that's also because I would, you know, like I would go from eating nothing to eating, like, cause I'm starving. I'm eating like, everything at once. Mm -hmm. Right. And it, too much, too much strain on the digestive tract. So I've dialed the fasting like way back over the last few years. I could, I, I know my body could like flick the switch if I wanted to, but again, it, it would be, have to be slow transition, like kind of like how I did today. Right. Where, okay. As soon as I feel hungry, then I'll just. Uh, like I like to do a protein smoothie cause it's easy on the digestion and it's mainly liquid. And, and then I can have like a, you know, light, light solid meal, right? Like, uh, eggs and, and oatmeal or whatever. So, mm -hmm. but, but yeah, but like you were saying, just kind of to stave off the, uh, the caffeine a little bit later, haven't been doing that lately, but I, <laughs> but I, I do notice a difference, right. Where I'm not getting the tremors or feeling as anxious when I, when I just drink it first thing. But like, like you said, if you're going to have it first thing for the caffeine drink, drink like a ton of water first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think that's important. And, and you know, yeah, I, I did the fasting too. And I think it's, it, you really got to just play with it and, and see what, how your body reacts. Um, like you're a guy that's like, you know, you never really struggled with weight. So it's, it's, you know, a lot of people use it for, for weight loss, but, um, you know, I, I mean, I personally used it just to see if, uh, cause I know that you can get some of like that, that mental clarity, like when you go a certain amount of time without it and, and you can like drain your stomach. So I was using it more for like the digestion and the mental clarity than I was as like a weight loss program. Yeah. So, so it's really, it's really f finding out what you're using it for and then, and then going about it. Um, like I think I did like, the longest one I did was, um, 80 hours I think and that was that was you know it was it was intense but it, um you know you you really know kind of like where your your um your mental sharpness is and sort of how, your resistance to, to you know cave into those cravings so um oh. you know it's just kind of experimental right yeah. see see what works for you you know there's going to be days where you're so busy you're going to go 12 hours without eating and that's fine right but um yeah yeah, it's just not to put too much pressure on it and like, yeah, listen to your body. That's something I'm doing nowadays. And I know you're doing that as well as like way more listening to the body, not like, not like redlining it or pushing things past our blowing past our limits all the time. Cause yeah, it's important to stretch our limits, but not always blow past them all the time. Cause that puts a lot of extra, you know, when we're already a little bit stressed with the cortisol, cortisol is a good hormone. It's just when it's constantly being redlined, that's not good. Right. When we're constantly... Right overdoing it all the time which i always used to do <laughs> well both yeah. of us used to do right we're just like no 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 more is better thousand yeah. times out of a thousand like you know <laughs> well, that, well that's what it's like when you're in your 20s yeah you know? yeah you don't just, you don't realize it's the the consequences of yeah. your actions because you think you're indestructible and yeah, and, yeah. Uh, it's, it catches up to you pretty <laughs> pretty quickly it's uh it's not something that you can maintain long term um no, so no. no it's uh you know it's it's lessons that you learn and, and, and you grow from. So, yeah. Uh, and that's <laughs> the maturity like we're talking to yeah. your younger audience, you know, take it from us. Like, yeah. you know, there's only so much you can rev that engine at, at the red line before, you know, something, something's going to burst or, or something's going to break. And, um, and whether it's minor or major, you know, that's, it's something that you really got to be 
uh, cognitive of and, and watch out for. No, absolutely. And what is some kind of recovery? Because I know we're both obsessed with ice baths. I love my ice bath. Mm-hmm. Peter loves his ice bath. <laughs> and a, like Pete, you did. You said you did a sauna, cold plunge, and a workout last night, right? Yeah, yeah. I got a little steam room in too, just to try Excellent. to clear out some of the sinuses. The yeah, yeah. Allergies have been awful here. And yeah, I didn't want Peter. Out, I did so. not want Peter to miss this episode because <laughs> I knew it would be good because we got lots of juicy content for you guys, but um like you sound you sound way better because last night you're like hacking up alum with all that phlegm, so. <laughs> I got, got a lot out this morning <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it, like colds and everything are going around and believe it or not even though it's the summer and we're in the heat of the summer it's like pushing end of july we're gonna have another heat wave come next week mm-hmm. people in my at work and stuff they've been getting covid like not a ton but it's been going around enough that people have been getting sick and they've been dropping like flies and then um, they've had to take time off work. So it's, it's going around and it's like, you're not hearing about it much, but it is going around. So everyone just a uh, food for thought, just, you know, sanitize, hydrate, eat good, sleep good. Cause I notice, you know, um, and this is probably very similar for ever, for everyone else too, is like, as soon as the sleep starts to go or you're not sleeping enough, your immune system just gets like attacked. And then you're just like, Boom, cold, boom, sick, boom. Oh my gosh, I need to take a day to recover. Yeah, or a week now. Yeah. <laughs> Feels like, yeah. And what else was I going to say there? Yeah, we talked about caffeine. We talked about training. Oh, yeah. So is the training still like about, you know, you still train for about like an hour? Or are you keeping it to kind of like 40 to 45 minutes? Like with that, that's with your warm up, cool down, and then, and then the weight training? Um, so I'd say like overall, like if I'm going in for a weight session, it would be about an hour 15, um, hour 15 to max an hour and 30. But I always do like the first 30 minutes is like a warm up and like full stretching routine. So I'm like, I do some form of cardio for 15 minutes just to get the, you know, the blood flowing and everything. And then a uh, long stretch, making sure I go through like the entire body, uh, rolling everything out, um, before. So you know, when I'm, when I'm actually hitting the weights, it's, it's really only for about 45 minutes, but I go fucking hard. So it's, you know, it's like, it's the intensity, like that's all you need. You know, if the intensity is there, um, you know, you could do a 30, 45 minute workout and you're absolutely gassed too, and, yeah. and your muscles are, are, are crushed. So, <laughs> so that's been working for me. Oh, yeah, um, but like, like with, with lacrosse, I've only been going like maybe two to three times a week at the most weight training. Um, but I just try to work in a little more like um, I'll combine body parts, uh, do like a push pull day, um, try to work in legs when I know I have a little bit of a break. So, so I'm not, uh, not absolutely sore for, for one lacrosse is, but um, yeah, just trying to find that balance, that routine. That's solid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause I, I like, the recovery component is, and and warming up and cooling down. I'm basically spending as much time with warm up and, and cool down as I am with the actual training. Because my mm-hmm. the way I do it, because I, I work out from home in the garage, is just the adjustable dumbbells. Right, I keep it to about thirty or forty pounds. That's pretty much the max I can do when I'm doing this hit. Mm-hmm. And I just put on that tab at a timer, twenty minutes, thirty seconds on, ten seconds rest, ten rounds. 10 exercises per round, 30 rounds total. So I get 30 sets in total and then three sets basically per exercise for chest, shoulders, legs. So I'm condensing a lot of movement into a really short period of time, but I'm absolutely drenched by the end of it. So, (laughs) and and then I can only do that two to three times a week because it's so intense. And then, and then I need that, I need that recovery, right? I need almost 24 to 48 hours between sessions because it is so intense but Mm -hmm. i like doing that more rather than being there for 45 minutes to an hour if i'm going to go to the gym i'm definitely going to do it for 40 to 45 minutes for sure or an hour because i can take my time i can lift heavier weight um i can still lift heavy weight at home but like when i'm on my own i don't got any spot or i I only push it so far so Mm -hmm. but because i'm kind of off creatine and all that um and i've been trying to (laughs) dial back the supplement spending I'm literally, mm-hmm. I only, I just bought from Costco that optimum optimized way, right? Where it's the, the way concentrate, way isolate mix. Um, and, um, and then, and then just what, what else do I have? Just magnesium. I'm pretty sure that's mm-hmm. the only two supplements I'm really on right now. 
and then I just I'm running. I've depleted my medicinal mushrooms one too, but <laughs> the supplements are so much goddamn money, man. Yeah, they uh, they're certainly not making it easy to stay healthy these days. That's for sure. God. Whether it comes from food or or supplements, so. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it's good. And it, and it really depends on your goals, right? Like, yeah. <clears throat> like, you know, if you're, if you're wanting to like, sort of like bodybuild or, or getting into that route, like you're, you're, you're going to go a little bit more because you're wanting to isolate more of the muscles and, and try to get the most like atrophy out of that, that muscle group. But, um, but yeah, for us, like more, I, I'm doing it now, like just longevity, being, being healthy, being able to move play play any sport that i want to play without uh, any hindrance like that that for me right now is is the most important and my job like being able to to perform all my duties and and not have you know an aching back at the end of the day or you know sore sore neck or shoulders or anything like that like that's it's really what i'm focusing on now so um yeah, yeah you, you know longevity funk functionality like having all those muscles functional jumping running walking like our ancestors, right? Like going back to the absolute bare bones basics seems to do a, like it, right? Like it, it, it does a lot for our, for our like physiology and stuff. Like, cause that's the way we're meant to move. Right. Mm -hmm. Have you ever listened Absolutely. to that audiobook or read that audiobook spark? Uh, I don't believe so. Yeah. It was one. I, that was the, for one of the first audiobooks that I read, cause it was recommended by uh, Mike Chang from six pack shortcuts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and I so I listened to it and it was actually really good because he talks about the the author talks about like all the case studies and stuff about like how you know how often exercise but the intensity behind exercise and and all that. So it's like we we don't need as much time. We don't need to spend as much time as we think we need to, right? Of course they recommend 150 hour 150 minutes of activity a week, moderate intensity, right? And then if it's higher intensity, like cut that in half, like 75 minutes. Right. But, but of course, walking, walking, one of the most underutilized exercises, but you know, our ancestors like our, our, like we would walk long distances to, you know, hunt like for hunting and gathering. And so like walking is so, so good for our health. And, uh, and that's something, right. Cause me and Ashley got our dog. So naturally like, I'm like, Kate, okay, he's got to be exercised. Right. So was not even a forethought. Like we just, we know like either I got to walk him in the morning or walk him after work. And that always, that that's always minimum half an hour to almost an hour. So, and, yeah. and you feel so good afterwards too. Right. And then when we go on our walks, that's when I come up with my best ideas for content and just talking about the future, talking about, you know, fun stuff we got planned, you know, with friends, family and so on. Mm hmm. Well, and, and like, you know, our, our society has become so sedentary, you know, we're a lot more working from home, office jobs, things like that. So it's something that can easily get neglected, but it's, it's so important. You know, we've, uh, we've just started picking up our golf game. So, you know, yeah. walking, walking all 18 holes, you know, don't, don't rent that cart, get, you know, yeah. <clears throat> get, get out on the course, walk. And, and, and the yeah. average nine holes for golf, the amount that you walk, it equates to like 15 to 20,000 steps just walking on the on the golf course so that's pretty that's pretty stellar so yeah but um so what kind of supplements are you on right now are you taking like creatine greens protein powder and then some other ones or is that kind of like the bulk of them it's a bulk so um so like every morning i got i do my cyto greens um uh, apple cider vinegar um i have my fish oil and then I usually do um, liver tablets, NAC, um, and L-theanine, um, GABA as well. I do I do GABA, so that's my morning. And I, I also mix um, a mushroom blend. So you got like your lion's mane, turkey tail, um, things like that, uh, cordyceps. Um, so I mix that with the greens. So that's my morning. And then, yeah, really, really only doing about like a weight, uh, weight isolate um for a little bit extra protein if i need it po post recovery after workout things like that um or if i'm on the run if i if i need something and and then just like um and then i do uh, a pre-workout i mean that's pretty staple I, that's pretty much where i get most of my creatine things like that and then i also like to do um like an electrolyte blend like just just a scoop 
you know, your sodium, potassium, just uh, <clears throat> make sure I'm staying hydrated throughout the day. And, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for, for supplements. And what uh, brand of the electrolyte blend are you taking right now? Like BioSteel or another one? Um, I think, I think it is BioSteel. I can't remember. It's like a hydro blast. It's called or something like that. I don't know. I, I don't remember the name, but it's just, I love yeah, their lemon lime flavor. So good. Mm, yeah. But I think it's important, right? Cause you could be drinking, you know, four, you know, four liters, a gallon of water, but if you're not getting the right electrolytes to go with it, you're just, you're just flushing it out. So you're not actually retaining any of that water. And, um, you know, if, if, if you're an athlete or you, you know, you, you need to, uh, to make sure that you're holding that water and utilizing it for your, for your energy and your, and your workouts. And not to mention, right. When you're an athlete, something I totally neglected and I didn't realize it when I was younger, cause I was just afraid that afraid, right. Uh, is salt athletes need more salt. Like just, you know, like a, a half a teaspoon or whatever, right. Just put it in with your, with your electrolytes or something like that. And again, I want to preface this also by saying like, uh, yes, extra sodium is not necessarily good for, um, you know, someone, let's say like, like my dad, who's on medication, he's had the previous cardiac arrest, right. That kind of thing. So it depends, it's very dependent on kind of, um, your current health conditions and all that kind of stuff. So you always, always, uh, re-verify with your physician, right. If you have any sort of health ailments first, right. Before, you know, starting any supplement protocol or any, uh, taking any advice from anyone is always consult with your physician and let them know like, Hey, this is the kind of the new changes that I'm taking on and stuff like that. So, cause again, we're just also speaking from experience, like that little disclaimer I had at the beginning of this episode, but, but for myself, I, and I'm going to do it after this too. Every time I just add a little bit of salt uh, before I take my caffeine in the morning, that's what I was doing before. Boom. Like game changer to the focus. Because like you said, if you're just taking flat water, whether it's sparkling or flat water, you're, you're just flushing it all out and it's just, you just pee it all out. So it's like, you're not really staying hydrated, but when you combine a little bit of electrolytes with some salt, it's been an absolute game changer. So it's, it's mm -hmm. crazy. Yeah. And, and a big thing too, like, I know it's hard in the Canadian healthcare, but if you have the opportunity to get, get blood work, do it. Like, um, there's nothing that will tell you more about your markers and everything than, than, you know, having a full breakdown of, of your hemoglobin and, and what that will t give you the telltale signs of what's going on in, in your body and, and some of the changes that you might be able to discuss with your doctor and, and make. So, um, you know, When's never last... shy away from, from getting blood work done. Um, can you, so yeah, if we're, yeah, since we're in BC speaking for, for, to British Columbians, for example, like, um, when's the last time you got blood work and can you get it done at life labs? Um, so the last time I got it was when, uh, before going into school. So last year, um, I had to get like a full, uh, well, I had to get like sort of to make sure I had no like hepatitis C or anything like that. But I also asked if I could get additional, um, blood work done as well to see all my other markers. Um, and so my doctor is fine with it. It's just, uh, I think it's just like, you know, going out and, and like asking and, and, um, like you, you can't just walk into life labs and get it, but yeah, you gotta um, get a re requisition. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But which is unfortunate, you know, it would be nice to be able to pay. And just get it if you if you wanted to know and and do it more continuously because <clears throat> instead of instead of like going when you think something's wrong with you because you know no nobody likes to go to the doctor's um, office or anything like that right you know when we yeah. we want to try to avoid a lot of people have that mindset of avoiding the hospitals so unless you like are in dire need or or you know but trying to like do something that you can minimize the the effects or the ailments that you might be having beforehand and then being able to treat them so then you're not having to go when you're uh you know ultra sick like i feel like that's something that we should try to transition into but unfortunately it, it takes so many resources and uh we're, we're just it's just not something uh attainable with a, our healthcare system right now yeah, yeah which is very I unfortunate yeah, no, for sure. There definitely needs to be some improvements there. But, you know, again, at the same time, they're doing the best they can with the resources that are at their disposable, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think the last time I did blood tests was like 2021. And I did it. And I the only thing I missed was doing the uh, test for 
uh, testosterone because it had to be done super early in the morning and fasted. So Mm -hmm. I definitely want to do that again, but but same thing. I got to go. I don't have a family doctor and I've in Canberra river and, um, my family doctor that I did have in Nanaimo was, uh, he's been on leave and he's basically retired. So that's been the tricky thing because there's not really any walk-ins here mm, in Canberra River. Yeah. Cause do you have any walk-in in? No? Uh, Is well, it- Nanaimo, we have the one walk-in clinic, but um, it's basically like a first come first serve. So yeah. if, if they're already, you know, four hour wait, they'll just tell you to leave. <laughs> and then oh, yeah. just like they won't even give you like a time to come back they'll just say we're not taking any more walk-ins right, right. now. So. or they'll put the sign on the door <laughs> saying they're closed for the day Excuse me. yeah yeah so that's kind of the tricky part so like we had better access when we first moved here and now we've been here for three years and it's kind of been getting tougher and tougher if you don't already mm-hmm. have a family doctor you're kind of you kind of got to go to a different jurisdiction to try and get in like the next city over or either nanaimo or courtney so but i know i'll get that figured out eventually but um, but the biggest thing is preventative measures, prehab, right? Not mm-hmm. wait for a problem to happen and then <laughs> rehab, right? We don't want that shit. So, no. but another thing I want to mention, you touched on it. We, we were chatting about it a little bit to prepare for this interview yesterday, but was uh, getting out of a rut. So let's say someone goes through a breakup or, or you're having uh, lots of conflict in your relationship or works kind of in the shitter, like, what are some, what are some ways that you, for yourself that you've helped uh, have helped you get out of kind of that depressed state kind of like, okay, like I just need to do a little bit of a 180. What have, what have you done or protocols that you've used to try to get out of that state or that mindset to change your state a little bit more quickly? Mm-hmm. Well, I, well, I think one of the, the biggest um, hurdles, uh, especially for men is just like, we, we like to just like hold our emotions in. And we stay silent. So I, th- I think, I think a big thing is just like sort of acknowledging that you know something, something doesn't feel right, or 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 something is amiss, and 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 being able to express yourself, reach out to friends, family, and and you know, and say that you, you have a problem. I think that's key number one. And and then next is just like finding you know your passions, your hobbies to to be able to like just get your mind shifted and and off just like that that vicious cycle of like repeating through your head of like things that you think have gone wrong and, you know, trying to like fixate on that. Um, trying to just get your mind to, to go to other things, things that make you happy. Like I know one of the big things for me is like, I, I love lifting weights. Always makes me feel good afterwards. I get that huge dopamine rush, um, cold plunges, anything like that, you know, yoga, um, you know, finding those things that you love to do, you know, whether it's hiking or being out in nature and, and just like, and just trying to just get your mind to just focus on something else, something you enjoy. Um, you know, it, it's tough if you're going through like, uh, things with a relationship because, um, you know, you, you know, that's sort of your life partner, somebody that you really care about and, and love. And, um, but you know, you, you, you can't love somebody if you don't love yourself. And if you're letting yourself get into that that darkness and, and deteriorate it's, you know, you're not going to be able to rebuild that relationship back. So, um, you know, it's a lot of like self-care just, just, yeah, I think that's, that's a big thing is, is trying to focus on yourself as well, not neglecting yourself. Yeah. Cause if you focus on yourself and what makes you like, what makes yourself tick and, um, helps you wake up in the morning, like your own protocols that work for you that you're, that you enjoy, but also you, you know how that makes you feel like now, nowadays I'm like someone that likes to have that creative outlet. Like this is my creative outlet. And when life kind of feels like it's falling apart a little bit, my, my, our routines help anchor us, help, helps us stay centered amongst the chaos. Cause it can be chaotic sometimes in life. So, uh, yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. And, uh, yeah. And like biggest, biggest thing too, though, is like, yeah, as men, we don't typically tend to talk about things like like Peter says, they're internalized and or we're just not ready to talk about it yet. So we'll maybe be silent about it for a while and then maybe we're ready to talk about it. But uh, especially when I have a friend that's like, you know, I haven't heard from in a while. And normally I like to check in like, you know, once a week kind of thing or or biweekly. Right. I know it's not as much anymore, but as I used to. But um, just that check in be like, hey, how's your week going? Sometimes that's all it takes is to open the dialogue, you know, to when, when someone is going through a hard time and you'd be like, Hey, how, how's things been? I haven't heard from you for a bit. You're doing all right. 
how's life, how's work, right? And then they might be you know, more willing to um, open up to you and be like, hey, actually, I've been going through a rough time or went through a breakup. I'm in a bit of a rut right now. So, and then another thing, again, not a fit for everyone, but I'm someone that's super open about it. I do, I do for my own sanity and just kind of how my brain's wired, I got to do therapy. I do uh, therapy <laughs> once a month. And honestly, it's made me a better it's made me a better man all around. It's made me a better communicator to my family, my friends, my wife. It made me be- like better communication between me and my wife, and then um, just a better thinker too. Like, like having someone that doesn't know you, right? Third party that's not a friend or family member that gets to see how you think through a, through that uh, like a un- unbiased lens. Mm-hmm. It it really helps to understand yourself better in a cave. Like what are my blind spots and be like, Oh, maybe I, maybe I should have like thought about that a little bit differently or I was, you know, too abrupt or too brash or it just helps you think better. Um, and, and just uh, more and more awareness and, and you're conscious of your, of your thoughts and how you articulate those thoughts to those around you. So, and I think it's a very powerful tool. Um, and again, it's not for everyone or it might not just be for you right now, but you might want to, explore it in the future and nowadays one of the biggest challenges that we're fighting is mental health challenges are very prevalent right it wasn't as much of the case was when our parents were growing up that wasn't talked about but now you peel back right covid peeled back that curtain and it's like yeah the world has a lot of challenges and the world has a lot of issues and and one of the biggest common denominators is people need help with mental health they need help with the personal psychology and how to make that better. So finding all the tools and resources that we have at our disposal, I know it can be like the internet's a sea of information and it's very overwhelming and paralyzing sometimes, (laughs) but knowing that you have help, knowing that there's resources out there to help and, and just the fact that you can, you know, number one, reach out to your family and friends first, because of course that's who you're going to be the most comfortable with. But then number two is to, yeah, you know, your talk to your spouse, your partner, your, your loved ones. And then, uh, yeah, anytime you're having challenges, it's just always, always just, just, just talk about it. Number one, just talk about it. Because if, if you don't talk about it, we, we don't know the pain that you're going through. Um, or you, and yeah. And then you can express that. So. And I think a big thing with therapy too, is that confidentiality and, and just that, that safe place, right. You know, it's like somewhere that you can, that you can open up and you know, that, you know, it's, it's not going to be talked about with someone else or, you know, spread her out through, throughout, you know, your, your social group. So, um, yeah, I think that that's big is just, you know, that safe, open environment that, um, you can express yourself. Um, yeah. And that's, that's, that's the biggest thing, like the no judgment, right? Like, you know, as men, mm-hmm. especially men, men can't stand that shit. We need, we, we need, we just <laughs> need that, uh, that space where like, okay, it's safe. We're good. We can talk about this. Cause, and it's also our, like our, our, uh, psychology as a man like we, we don't want to feel like we're, we're weak right this this the whole society thing of like we don't want to feel weak we don't want to feel like um we're not strong enough right we want to we want to be the man of the house we want to we want to help be the, the the provider it's just that whole instinctual psychology right which mm-hmm. it's not the way it is it's not so much the way it is today as, as much we don't need to be so obsessed about that because there's 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 more there's more um we have, we have, we have help, right? Like mm-hmm. it can't just be one man working for the entire household. It's gotta be, everyone's got to work today. <laughs> yeah. Husband and wife, kids, <laughs> everyone's got to work. Cause it's so yeah. bloody expensive to live. So knowing that, that we're not, we don't have to hold the entire responsibility, financial, personal, whatever, right. Knowing that we have help. We just have to know that we have help. We don't have to make it more difficult than it needs to be on ourselves. Right. Yeah. And I think it's something that's almost been like hardwired into our DNA, um, you know, evolving over time. And um, yeah, I think it's just something that we need to like, you know, break that cycle and, and, you know, be more receptive to help and, and yeah. And that, that partnership, you know, not just being so isolated. So yeah. Yeah. And thinking that you need to do everything. Yeah. Yeah. Cause that, that, that'll just frustrate you. It just won't work long-term. <laughs> Everyone needs help. 
And then, and then every, I always thought, oh my God, like, how does this person have it all together? Like, how are they doing so much? And it's like, the reality is, the truth is they have shit loads of help. That's the reality. Like everyone that's, that's at the top of their game, even on their bad days, they have tons of help. They have coaches, they have trainers, they have therapists, they have everyone, everyone, like they're, they're utilizing every resource. And that's, that's the only difference. Like Mm -hmm. you don't have to have millions of dollars to, to ask for help. You just have to be comfortable and and open to asking for help. And when we're comfortable and open to asking for help and be like, Hey, you know, uh, like I want to improve, I want to improve my psychology. I want to improve my physiology. Like once we know, we just like, Hey, I need to make some adjustments once we know that. And then we ask for help, then that's when we can make change. That's when we can adapt. That's when we can improve. I think the bottom line is everyone, you know, most people is it's inherent in them that they are obsessed with improvement. Anyone that's done well, they're obsessed with improving, with getting better, with wanting to be better. It's just a, it's just a, like, you know, a uh, mentality of like wanting to be better and wanting to be the best at what you do and, and helping, helping a ton of people do the same. Yeah. And, and I think for some people that, um, you know, they're successful. Um, but if they're, if they're not getting that additional help, they're, they're themselves are burning their ends up both ends of the candles. Right. So, um, you know, I know a lot of successful people that, you know, abuse drugs and, and things like that. And that's how they, they're able to work those super long hours, not get sleep. And so, you know, but, you know, over time, you know, that wears down your body and, and you can burn out from that. So, um, you know, that's not a healthy way to do it either is, is that. So, you know, try to, try to avoid that if you can and, uh, and look for those healthier options. Yeah, no, for sure. And another thing I want to mention was, um, the, the similarity between the mental performance that you need in sport to in your career and how those two come together. So like you've touched on it briefly, but like, how, how have you, how have you noticed that? Like being an athlete, cause it does being an, a, 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 like a, an athlete helps you to hone in and focus better. I feel like, because you're, um, like when you come from being an athlete, you're, you're, you're taught to hone in on a particular, right? Like, uh, in, in your particular sport versus if we're just, if someone's not an athlete and they're just going into work, right. When you go into work, like everyone's taught in work to multitask and all that kind of stuff. But in actuality, that's killing productivity and it's killing your performance. But in sport, knowing that you are, when you're in a sport and then you're transitioning to work, it's like, you can get that kind of laser focus connection that you need a bit better. I feel like, because if you don't do that, you're, you're not going to play your game at the, to the best of your ability because your intention is divided. So why don't you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, I think the, the biggest like things I could take away from is number one, I think the, the teamwork, I think that's the huge thing is being able to talk, with your coworkers or, or your teammates about sort of like how you can come together to create the bigger picture and the final product. And, you know, whether it's, you know, making the most sales or, or, you know, saving people's lives, you know, you need that, that cohesive unit to achieve that. Um, another thing is just being able to adapt under pressure. Um, you know, when, when the game's on the line and it's tied and, and being able to hone in, whether, you know, you have a full arena of people screaming at you or, cheering for you, being able to take those emotions and being able to, to use it and, and not let it overwhelm you, um, you know, and give you that, that anxiety. I think that's one of the key lessons I think that I, I would probably take away from, from my sports career is being able to use that pressure and to, uh, to strive in it instead of letting it like take control. And then I just sort of freeze up and, and, and can't sort of uh, perform. Like ride, like, like ride that wave of pressure, right? Flow, flow with the pressure rather than like, let it take you over. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. Teamwork, keywords, teamwork, cohesion. Uh, yeah. Like cohesion and teamwork and, and like thriving under pressure and like learning from sport, like you're encountering those circumstances like frequently. So they transition to the workplace well, because you're, you run into the similar um, scenarios at work too. They're different, 
that's not like sport, but it's, uh, you're, you're like, you've learned, you, you learn from sport, like, cause you're in those circumstances and scenarios and they, it's like, you're preparing, you're, you're a bit more prepared for it in a way. Yeah. And it's like the, and it's the big thing too, is that discipline, you know, doing that extra things, you know, even outside of work or, you know, whether you want to, um, to advance in your career is, you know, you got to put in that extra time effort. You know, you do the same thing with sport. You want to get better at a sport. You're going to put in that extra time and effort. So it's really about, um, you know, using that discipline to say, you know, what do I want to get out of this? Do I, do I want to, um, you know, reach higher or am I happy where I'm at? And, you know, just, just seeing where, where you fit into that and, and knowing, you know, the more that you put into it is the more you're going to get out of it. Yeah, and doing it properly, you know, it's a, yeah. it's not, it's not, you know, practice makes perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. One of my, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Actually, Mr. Dodd middle school told us that he's yeah. like, no, it's not perfect. Pra- it's not perfect. Uh, practice make perfect. It's, it's perfect practice that makes perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Cause if you're, yeah, if your practice that you're and your process is honed in on and you're, and you're doing that and styled in, then you'll, it'll make perfect. Mm-hmm. But biggest thing is it'll help you prepare. Yeah. Like pre- pre- preparation, preparation is like my like new thing now as, as uh, like just being, just being as prepared as I can and, and then yeah, re- re- researching all the different angles of, you know, how to, how to be a better interviewer, podcaster, um, athlete and stuff. So, but last, last uh, question, and then I'll let you go, Pete, because we're almost on the hour. Um, <laughs> okay. Where do you see career and life taking you in the next five to ten years, or where do or where do you want it? Where where do you want to see things things go or evolve? Well, I, I want to earn my degree, get a bachelor of science in nursing. Like that's number one, number one, my goal, and I'm gonna do everything I can to achieve it. Um, and then hopefully transition. Uh, I've reached out to the armed forces, so um, if they can, they can come with a deal where they might be able to pay for the last few years of my education. And then, then I can provide service for, for two years. So that's a route that I'm looking to explore and seeing if that's a possibility. Um, yeah, just, just something to transition and, and find that speciality because, uh, being a registered nursing, you have a lot of different options. You can work in the community hospital, uh, pediatrics. There's a lot of different, um, avenues that you can explore so just finding something that really reaches out to me and and sort of something that i i feel is my calling um but you know i'm i'm still open i'm still fresh to it so uh i'm look, looking forward to experiencing as much as i can and and seeing seeing where life takes me down this down this path yeah no totally i'm excited for you bro i miss you and uh we'll definitely be visiting again soon i want us to do gold river golfing um, that's still on the list. I've got it on the bucket list right now for the summer bucket list. So, uh, I got here, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll share with you, uh, if you're online later, um, for the, uh, yeah, the schedule and stuff for August, I'm thinking like mid August or something like that. Cause I got a, like a four day weekend coming up here in mid August. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me know the yep. itinerary and yep. uh, we'll make yep. it work. We'll I'll... stack, we'll stack the day. We'll go golf and then you, you and Aaron can stay for the yeah. night and we'll have a good time. So. Yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it, bro. Right on, brother. Awesome, stellar episode. And uh, yeah, I'll be uh, editing this and uh, posting it. I'll send you the clips, share it on all your socials. Um, Our last one, I think, did like 50 or 60 plays. So that was freaking awesome. And that was Mm -hmm. right after I posted it. So yeah, share it where you can. And uh, and, uh, yeah, we'll get get it posted and I'll send you the, the clips. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks as always, Alex. Always a pleasure talking with you, brother. Hell yeah. Love you and I miss you and uh looking forward to Love our you too, bro. to our uh to hanging out in our golf and soon. Hell yeah. It'll be a good time, man. Have an awesome game tonight. Thank you. All right. Ciao, All brother. Right. Take care. Disclaimer. The information I provide to the podcast listeners of Mindset is based on my own own research and personal experience. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Not all information is factual or has scientific evidence to support it. I am simply sharing the best information I can find and finding valuable content to help you improve your mental health and well-being. Please consult your doctor or therapist before trying any of the modalities I discuss on this podcast.
And this episode is brought to you by RadioGuestList.com, the number one free radio guest podcast and talk show guest expert interview booking service on the internet. This episode is brought to you by PodcastGuest.com, connecting podcasters with great guests. Podcasters. Find relevant experts and other podcasters to be guests on your podcast. Experts, guests, and more. Get booked on great podcasts to expand your reach and audience. Podcastguest.com connects podcasters with experts, authors, and other podcasters to be guests on their podcasts. Thanks for tuning into this episode of Mindset. If you liked what you heard, be sure to subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Your support helps us bring you more inspiring content and, ex- and expert insights. Join our community on social media at mind.sep on Instagram, at mind sep on YouTube, and visit our website, Alexander Muir, that's Amazon Mike, U-I-R, dot com forward slash blog for more exclusive resources and updates. Until next time, keep optimizing your mind and body and see you in the next episode. Dear listeners, I thank you all, ladies and gentlemen, for listening to the Mindset Podcast. This is your host, Alex Muir, helping you flex your mind, body, and soul. And I just want to start off by saying, I appreciate you. I appreciate you listening to this podcast. I appreciate your feedback on my episodes and uh, following the show. And I would like your feedback as well in the form of a short rating and review on Apple Podcasts. uh, Spotify Podcasts now has a rating and review section. Um, So I would love your feedback on Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts um, to to help me uh, attract great guests and to help me further the show and uh, develop the show and improve the show. So hopefully you guys all enjoyed this uh, episode. And again, uh, you can reach out to me um, to give additional feedback on my, my blog. That's alexandermuir.com slash blog. You can reach out to me on uh, through my Instagram, through Facebook. All my links are in the show notes. And again, I appreciate you and thank you all for listening. Mindset's mission is to empower 30 plus million listeners worldwide to achieve optimal mental and physical health through engaging podcasts, inspiring positive change for future generations. 